Among the ranks of Team SCG are 14 Pro Tour victories, 2 Magic Invitational wins, 26 Grand Prix victories, 64 Pro Tour top 8s, and after this morning's ceremony, 6 Magic the Gathering Pro Tour Hall of Famers. Good morning, folks. I'm Ruben Bressler alongside Cedric Phillips here from Pro Tour Theros in Dublin, Ireland. Cedric, good morning. Good morning, Ruben. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you doing? I can't complain here in Dublin, Ireland, enjoying myself. Taking coverage on their Pro Tour. Absolutely. And speaking of the Pro Tour, what are you most looking forward to today? Well, a couple of things, honestly. You know, we're sitting here in the limited format right now. We're going to start off with three rounds of booster draft. And, you know, the Theros format hasn't been explored that much. Just brand new on Magic Online as well. That's when people really start to figure things out. Because when they can sit there and they can draft there a bunch. Um, but people are just beginning to do that now. And so I really want to see what strategies are actually going to be what the pros are looking to do. It's very easy for people to go towards, you know, blue, white, heroic, red, white, heroic, stuff like that. Some of the obvious strategies. Maybe a monstrosity. But... We're going to actually see now. The talk is over. It's time for people to put their money where their mouth is and see what are going to be those 3-0 decks. Absolutely, yeah. as, as far as standard is concerned, you know, we've seen some pretty obvious standard decks. We've seen our mid-range decks. We've seen our mono red. We've seen our Sphinx's Revelation decks. Is that, the, is that the way that the professionals are going to skew towards what's obvious? Or are they going to try some newer things, some different directions? That's what I want to see, too. Craig Wesco has access to a couple more two ones. That's true. So he might uh, put up another good run. But let's cut over to Team SCG and break down each member uh, of Team SCG this weekend. We're going to start things off with Sam Black. Sure. And Sam, you know, of course, the one of the better deck builders for the team. You could argue he's the best deck builder on the team, certainly the most innovative. You know, really want to see what he's going to be able to put together for Team Star City this weekend. You know he's going to try things that are off the cuff first. The Aristocrats, Van Hexproof, he's had success with. But, you know, is he going to rein it in and play maybe a more established deck and work there? We're going to, we're going to find out over the course of this weekend. Absolutely. And he even thinks of himself more as a limited mind. Sure. Uh, so we're very fortunate to be able to look in on his drafts this weekend. Next up, Kai Bude. Well, I don't think there's anything I can say that hasn't already been said. Um, you know, coming to a Pro Tour, that's one of the last people I do want to play against. Yes, he doesn't play as much as he used to during his prime, but at the end of the day, the skills are certainly still going to be there. And, you know, teaming with this group of Hall of Famers and young up-and-comers, for lack of a better term, and Owen Turtonwald, Reed Duke, Matthew Costa, those guys are going to have him seasoned, good to go. Um, and, you know, he's someone I do not want to play against if I was anyone out there, even on the team. Itself being, I don't want to play against him, even though I test with them all weekend long. Absolutely. Kai has seven wins on the Pro Tour, and only three times has he made the top eight and not won. And two of those times were to two of his team SEG teammates, Brad Nelson and Huey Jensen. Sure. Next up, Patrick Chapin. Well, we know his nickname, the Innovator. Uh, him and Sam, they bring a lot to the table as far as deck construction is concerned. You know that Chapin does love those blue strategies, even a big fan of Grixis, as most people do now. So we'll see if he's going to stay with his roots, play a control deck. I know he's not the biggest fan of Sphinx of Revelation, but if it's the best thing to be doing as a control deck, that's certainly what he's going to do. And we'll see what the Innovator was able to brew up this time. Yeah, absolutely. He was relatively happy with the Bant control deck that used Sphinx's Revelation mm -hmm. to a great effect in the last Pro Tour. We'll see what he brings to the table this time around. Next up, Matt Costa. A youngster, um, but very, very successful so far. Does have a Grand Prix win, Pro Tour Top 8, where he did lose to John Finkel in Honolulu a couple years ago. Um, Snapcaster Mage is no longer with us, so things are going to be a little bit more difficult for Matt, but you know he's on the search for a blue deck. You know he wants to be casting Sphinx's Revelation, and we'll see if he'll be doing it this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. He's... Uh 24th right now in the top 25 mm -hmm. rankings from Wizards of the Coast. We'll see if he can improve on that. Next up, the Duke, Reed Duke. Well, he's, uh, he's arguably the hottest player in the world right now, uh, coming off of a Grand Prix Finals at Grand Prix Detroit, losing to Josh McLean, uh, but does have a win in Grand Prix Miami, uh, the runner-up of the World Players Championship as well. He's done a lot of really nice things this year and over the past couple of years as well. Ninth place at Pro Tour's Dragon's Maze. He's one of the players who just needs to get a little bit closer, get that first Pro Tour top underneath his belt. He's got the virtual ninth place there, but I think uh, you know everyone knows how good Reed is, and it's just only a matter of time until he finally cracks that. Absolutely. Yeah, we saw how powerful he can be with Jund Mid range strategies. We've seen him play blue decks in the past. He's just a master. He's great at everything, including yeah. Bogles in Modern, which yeah. he used to take the second place in this summer's Players' Championship. Next up, Johnny Magic, John Finkel. Again, you're, you're leaving me with a difficult difficult question to answer here. I mean, I, again, what can I say that hasn't already been said? Uh, same thing goes for Kai with John. You know, he's been playing more Magic. He did got a lot of testing in at the Castle, although we are in Dublin. And, you know, he seems like he's pretty well prepared for this tournament. Again, this is someone that you don't want to sit against at a Pro Tour level event. Really any event, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, he's going to be good to go. The skills are always going to be there. And we'll see if he's able to make another top eight. Yeah, and most people think of four Pro Tour top eights and 
one Pro Tour win as a good barometer, a good starting point for getting into the Hall of Fame. Since John Finkel got into the Hall of Fame in 2005 as part of the inaugural class, he has three Pro Tour top eights, including a win. Mm -hmm. So he could almost get into the Hall of Fame again yeah, I don't if know he if we, wanted to. I don't to. know if we do re-inductees into the Hall of Fame, but he's certainly qualified to be in there just based off of when he came back. Absolutely. But speaking of Hall of Famers, we have our brand new Hall of Famer mm -hmm. up next, and that's William Baby Huey Jensen. Well, a limited mastermind in every sense of the word. I mean, he's great at all aspects of Magic, but I think he's best at limited. So, you know, starting off the tournament on a booster draft, you always want to get off to a great start at the Pro Tour. You want to at least get one win underneath your belt or at least get off to a nice booster draft and see how things are going to go there. So, because the tournament's going to be starting with a Theros booster draft, I think things are going to start off well for Huey. You know, not to say his constructive skills are poor because they're obviously quite good, but, you know, the thing that you know about Huey is a specialist in team limited tournaments. So, he definitely wants to start in the limited aspect of Magic. And again, starting with a booster draft, I wouldn't be surprised to see him start 2-1, 3-0, really get that ball rolling, and you get that momentum going. It's really important, again, for a pro tour to get, get some wins underneath your belt, get the confidence up, and then just let it go from there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm excited to see how Huey does this weekend. He was obviously the winner of Grand Prix Oakland earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Previous to that, his previous Grand Prix top eight was in 2004. Wow. So it's been a little while since he's had success on the Pro Tour circuit. Uh, he's finally getting his feet back under him. He obviously has the team win yep. on the Star City Games, yep. team sealed open with Reed Duke and Owen Turtenwald. Up next, we're gonna talk about Pro Tour gate crash champion, Tom Martell. Now, Tom hasn't got to play as much competitive magic as he'd like to recently. Again, jobs, real work, I don't know anything about that. But one thing about Tom is that when he is zoned in, when he is well tested, he is someone that you do not want to play against. Again, if you watch the top eight of Pro Tour Gate Crash when he was winning that tournament, defeating Eric Froelich on a mulligan to five, and eventually winning the finals against Joel Larson, you saw a very, very good Magic player there, very methodical. Uh, some could say slow. I think, with, you know, methodical, slow, whatever word you want to use. When he's in the tank, when he's thinking out all of the plays and all the possibilities that the opponent can have, he's very deadly. Again, he uh, top 16 over in Dragon's Mace, had a great weekend that, a great weekend there, excuse me. Uh, player Championship didn't go as well as he wanted it to, but he's back here, he's well tested, I feel like he's good to go. Wouldn't be surprised to see him have one of the better finishes this weekend. Absolutely. Lingering Soul's no longer in the format, of course, so he might have a little bit tougher of a time without those four spirit sure, tokens, sure. but we've seen how well he can do with the team deck, top eighting Pro Tour Paris with Callblade, yep. and then top eighting and winning Grand, uh, Pro Tour Gate Crash yep. with the Aristocrats. Next up, we're going to talk about Zvi Mauschwitz, who isn't actually able to be here this weekend yep. uh, because of hashtag real life and yep. things happening in his job, but he was a big part of the process of getting to the team decks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you have a constructed mastermind like Zvi, you know, you've got Huey on the limited side. Um, with all of his experience, you've got Zvi on the constructed side. You know, you know, he's written many, many articles just about how he goes about building decks. You know, when you've got him chiming in via email, you know, yeah, let's try this, let's try this, let's try a tweak here, a sideboard plan here against these decks, that's invaluable. Uh, so be able to have him on the team, even though he's not gonna be in attendance this particular weekend, be able to have him helping out with maybe some hyper mana strategies or just, you know, tweaking, trying some slots, giving new ideas for the guys in the castle, you know, that, it's, it's hard to quantify just how, how powerful that is. So even though he's not gonna be here, he's still here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you could tell from the castle. You could just see that Zvi had an influence on, on everything. When you have a Hall of Famer of that caliber on your team who's been around that long, it's tough to not have an impact. Speaking of Hall of Famers with huge impact, Gabriel Nassif. Yeah, the yellow hat himself. Right. Again, he's someone that doesn't get to play Magic all that much. Hashtag real life, as you said. But when he does come back out and play, he always does put up a pretty good finish. Again, Pro Tour's Dragon's Maze. Uh, Glenn Jones and I covering that tournament. We saw him steadily climb up the ranks, almost making the top eight. Um, you know, his last round, I think he lost that one. But if he did, when he was going to finish around ninth or 10th place. So Nassif is someone, again, who does have a lot of success on the pro circuit. Wouldn't be surprised to see him break out yet again this weekend. Yeah, he flies under the radar. He's a little bit shy, a little bit quiet. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, being from France, English not his first language, he flies under the radar and people don't, people tend to underestimate him, even though he's arguably the third best Magic player of all time, 2004 Player of the Year, still has it. Speaking of Player of the Year, we have Brad Nelson up next. Brad Nelson, everybody knows him, friendly face, loves his green cards, but... Again, remember, this is a former player of the year. This is a two-time pro, pro tour top eight competitor, excuse me. This is a guy who, when he gets the infamous Brad Nelson game face on, you don't want to play against him. He's well-tested this weekend. He really likes where he's at for constructed. Uh, you know, he's, he, I spoke with him in the castle when I got there a couple days ago saying, I'm really happy with my evaluations for limited. I started poorly with, with an 0-3 and a couple one twos, turned those into a 2-1, final one turned into a 3-0. So you see the incline that he's going on here um, as far as limited portion is concerned. And then of course, 
in constructed, you know just how good Brad is in standard. Uh, we saw those Grand Prix, um, the last four standard Grand Prix we played in, top eight, top eight, top 16, top eight, we're in a standard Pro Tour. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see him top eight this tournament. Absolutely, the 2010 Player of the Year in his wheelhouse here at this standard Pro Tour. Up next, we have a Pro Tour champion in Paul Rietzel. Paul, it's kind of interesting um, where you look at Paul Rietzel, a Pro Tour champion, and you see that result and you're kind of saying, well, what else has he done? You know, and of course, he's got some Grand Prix top eights. He has a Grand Prix win in Mexico City, uh, another Pro Tour top eight in Honolulu a couple years back as well. One thing about Paul is that if he finds the right deck for him, it's very, very difficult to beat him, but he's been kind of floundering trying to find the right deck recently. You know, when I think of Paul Rietzel, I think of a player who plays White Weenie very well. I think of a player who plays Affinity very, very well, uh, the Affinity Top 8 that he had in uh, Grand Prix Portland earlier this year. You know, when he kind of flounders around Jason Sphinx's Revelation, things that I'm not very good at, not to say that he's poor at it, but he is much better at playing those linear aggressive decks and getting in every single point of damage that he can and never missing anything, getting a great read on his opponent. That's where his strengths lie. So we'll see exactly what deck he chose this weekend and see if he's going to play to his strengths or or maybe he does take maybe the Jace Architect of Thought approach, Sphinx's Revelation approach, and he feels that these are my strengths for this particular weekend. It's going to be interesting because if he finds a deck that really harmonizes with him, he's really difficult to beat. Yeah, Paul Rietzel, one of the best at attacking opponents and attacking metagames with yeah. the right metagame call. Paul has three Pro Tour top eights and a win, one more, and he gets that magical fourth Pro Tour top eight that puts him squarely in the Hall of Fame contention yeah. for next year. I think that really puts him in the conversation, too. Of You know, he really, really wants him more because, you know, he'll kind of underplay how important the Hall of Fame is to him because that's just his personality. But he wants that another top eight. He wants to be in the conversation. He eventually wants to get in with Ben Stark, with Luis Scott Vargas, and with Huey Jensen. Absolutely. And one of the things that makes his resume unique is he has a Team Sealed Grand Prix win yep. under his belt alongside his teammate, Matt Sperling. So Matt Sperling is a guy that you do see right for Channel Fireball. Um, and you see that, you know, he doesn't have, you could say is the results of the rest of the people on the team. I mean, just looking at the numbers, it's, you know, it is what it is. But there's a reason that he's on the team because it'd be very easy for the rest of the crew to say, you know, Matt, you know, we're not going to test with you. We know you're friends with Paul, that sort of thing. What that means is he brings something to the table. Very skilled player, played a lot of pro tours, just waiting to have that one breakout finish. We know in a couple years back uh, in a world tournament, he floundered around the top eight for a little while, didn't end, up, didn't end up making it. But this is a very skilled magic player who, yes, his personality is pretty funny uh, and he jokes around a lot on Twitter. Twitter and all that stuff in his article, Sperling Sick of It series. But at the end of the day, he can really play. You know, he's really a, a really, really good at PTQs, does have some Grand Prix top eights, and he just needs to break out to really solidify himself as a Pro Tour mainstay. Absolutely. I think that he's this close, this close to being a legend of the game. He's already sure. got the one. Uh, the, 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 the Grand Prix win. He's one of the biggest names in social media, yep. which is one of the most important things to be able to do. So he needs to put a big stamp on his resume. Yep on the competitive circuit yeah. to be able to put his name really out there and get his name up there with his illustrious teammates. Another illustrious teammate of his, 2011 Player of the Year, Owen Turtenwald. Someone I've known for a very long time. He grew up in Milwaukee. I grew up in Cleveland, went to school in Indiana. We've PTQ'd against each other. I've known Owen since he was 18 years old. Um, and I remember the first time I played against him, I was a PTQ in Chicago, where I ended up beating him to be able to double draw on a top eight. And I knew at that actual moment that he was better than me at Magic already. Now, you know, we saw him kind of flounder a little bit. He had a uh, GP top eight in Columbus with Goblins, you know, a couple GP top eights here and there. And then he had the really big breakout year uh, where he ended up topping, I think it was like nine Grand Prix that season. Uh, didn't get a win, unfortunately. But for a lot of people, I was like, oh, where did this kid come from? And for me, it was just like, well, it's about time that people realize that he is this good. This is no fluke. You know, the one thing that the teammates say, John, Kai, everybody on the team is they say, he's arguably the best player on the team. And to say that and hear that from those guys who have who've done so much in Magic to say that he's arguably the best player on the team, certainly one of the most technically gifted players in Magic, that means a lot coming from those guys. Absolutely, and his range is enormous. He's yes. able to play control decks, aggro decks, tribal decks, as we saw in his first Grand Prix Top 8 with Goblins mm -hmm. uh, in Columbus, Ohio during the Flash GP. Uh, and he is a very talented individual. He, he won, I believe, seven uh, Grand Prix in one season, which is pretty much unheard of. Yeah. He has 11 overall, doesn't have a Grand Prix win yet, doesn't have a Pro Tour win yet, mm -hmm. but he certainly has a great chance to do that here at Pro Tour Theros. Our last member of Team SCG just flew in from New York City, Godenis Vidugiris. He likes to do this. He likes to fly in really, really late, be it for a European Grand Prix or for a Pro Tour. And then, you know, he'll just kind of spike it and then go back to being a lawyer in New York City. Um, I, it, Go is kind of interesting because, as you mentioned, you know, he does, he, you know, he's here, he flies under kind of the radar, it's not the big personalities that like Kai and John and Reed and Owen are, but again, 
you forget that he has multiple Pro Tour topics, that he has a Pro Tour runner-up losing to Alexander Hain in the finals. You know, he's super accomplished, but, you know, he doesn't really write. Uh, he's not really uh, on social media, so you don't really think of him as this really great established player. And, you know, that probably plays into his place to his advantage of people just, ah, yeah, I'm sitting down against Go Dennis. Yeah, okay, you know, top eight Pro Tour and finals of Pro Tour, and then, you know, doesn't really make any mistakes, kind of quiet, goes about his ways, and just keeps racking up those victories and those Pro Tour points. And you have to remember one thing. He's been on the train now for three, four consecutive years, and, you know, this isn't, again, a big personality that you hear about or think of, but these wins aren't accidents. You know, if they keep happening, they can't be accidents. Absolutely, you know, yeah. And he's on the team for a reason. Sure. The, uh, the 2011 and 2012 Lithuanian national captain has six Grand Prix top eights. He's won three of them. So when he gets there, he knows how to finish. Yeah. Uh, and he also does very well with Team SCG decks, as we saw at Pro Tour Abbas and Restored making the finals with Band Hex Proving. Uh, well, those are the members of Team Star City Games. Cedric, as we head into the first draft portion this morning, who is your favorite from Team SCG to 3 0 this morning's draft? Obviously, a lot of fantastic Magic players to choose from, but for me, it's going to be the new Hall of Famer, Huey Jensen. Again, his limited prowess is just unbelievable. You know, I, I, I can't really stress it enough. Again, winning with the Brock, the Brockefellers and Team Sealed, um, winning Grand Prix Oakland. Just he is, you know, for when you look at Channel Fireballs, Ben Stark is their limited mastermind. That's what I think Huey Jensen is to this team. Now, of course, all these players are fantastic limited, but this is a guy who really wouldn't surprise me at all to just go 3 0 3 0 in both of his drafts. He's just such a fantastic. Fantastic limited player. That's the one I that I'm gonna be keeping. Yeah, that's the one person, excuse me, I'm gonna be watching. Uh, the other one too is just gonna be Owen Turtenwald. Again, a very, very skilled player, very technical, very proficient. Um, a lot of his Grand Prix top eights are in sealed deck and limited Grand Prix. So again, wouldn't surprise me at all to see him string together a 5-1 or a 6-0 over the course of this Pro Tour. Absolutely, yeah. Owen actually told me that sealed is his favorite format. He's fantastic at it. But uh, but of course, no sealed here at the Pro Tour. No, no. Limited, still very proficient, and obviously Huey is fantastic. Fantastic. You were able to watch his draft, and we'll have that breakdown with Huey later in the day. So this afternoon, we get into Team SCG's real wheelhouse, and that's Constructed. Which uh, of the favorites do you think are going to finish the day 5-0 in the Constructed portion? So it's kind of interesting, um, you know, be between the decks that they have to choose from here, and, you know, what decks are they going to play? You know, they did a lot of work on a lot of different things here, so again, they were still solidifying what decks they wanted to play leading up until this morning. So we'll see exactly what every player chose, but the one player for me... Um, that I really want to see does do well in this construct and see exactly how the performance Matt Costa. Um, we saw the last Pro Tour, Pro Tour Dragon's Maze. Uh, I actually ended up covering a lot of Matt's matches, and a lot of the time that I remember covering it is I would tweet, all right, Costa lost game one. And then he'd win game two and win game three with about five minutes left on the clock. And I talked to Matt while we were in the castle, and he said, yeah, I, I went uh, two and eight in game ones. Wow. And I was able to string together a seven and three record in Constructed. So, you know, that means a couple of things. One, his Constructed deck, he was very happy with the upper sideboard. Yeah. Two, doesn't get down after a loss. But three, you know, he's really, really adept at Constructed. He feels very, very comfortable in that area. Um, now, if you think of Matt Costa, you think of Snapcaster Mage. You think of Revelation, you think of Restoration Angel. You know, Revelation is still with us. The rest of those guys are not. So is he able to find a blue deck? We're going to see. I haven't really seen Matt Costa attack very much over the course of his career. He's always looking for Glacial Fortress, Hollowed Fountain, and Friends. So can he find that strategy? Is that strategy going to be good enough for him? That's what we're going to see. Yeah, absolutely. Matt Costa is one of the most patient players yes. I've ever seen. He waits until the last possible moment to pull the trigger, get every little edge that he can yeah. out of every little moment. I'm very excited to see how he does in standard and, of course, the rest of the tournament. Mm -hmm. Prediction time. Okay. You get one pick okay. from Team Star City Games. Who are you going to pick to do the best in this tournament? It's easy for me. Reed Duke. He's, he's, he's red hot right now, and this is no accident. You know, again, you, you think of Reed, you think of a fantastic Magic player, but, you know, we, we talk about a lot about the Players' Championship, not the recent one, but the one before where he had a miserable tournament, and he didn't let it get him down where it's easy for a lot of people to. He made the, he made the notebook with the mistakes in it, you know, came back better than ever, and, again, he is looking for that one top eight. Not, not to solidify himself, but just to break through. Absolutely. You know, because he's doing fantastic in the player rankings right now. And, it, it, you know, it's funny because you look at the rest of the rest of the group uh, for Team Star City, you see a lot of Pro Tour top eights there. You see Reed with a ninth, and he's got a couple Grand Prix wins and does really well in the Star City Games Open Series circuit. But it's time for him to break through, and I think it's a long time coming, and it's not going to surprise me one bit if he breaks through this weekend. And honestly, I don't think it's surprising any of you guys at home either. Absolutely. If I had to make one pick this weekend, I made it during the Players' Championship. Okay. Reed got second in the Players' Championship. Sure. Huey got second in the Hall of Fame voting. Yep. The third member of that Three Musketeers class ah. is Owen Turtenwald. Sure. I would not be surprised to see him get second 
Okay. Just like his fellow compatriots. Okay. But I would also not be surprised to see him win this event. He's just such a proficient Magic player. He's so good in game. It's it's staggering to watch. Another player I would keep an eye out for who's been on a tear recently is Brad Nelson, yep. who of course, another player of the year. Standard is his wheelhouse. He's doing a really good job. And just having watched this week, Kai Buddha is an impressive Magic player. I would not be surprised to see him add an 11th Pro Tour top eight to his resume. Well, there you have it, folks. Day one of Pro Tour Theros is underway and Team SCG is ready. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com for round-by-round -round updates, videos, and analysis from Dublin, Ireland. For Cedric Phillips, I'm Ruben Bressler. We'll see you later.